as a barista, when is it okay to give your customer the finger to dose coffee? Hey everyone, I'm Luke and welcome back to the Artista YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee. And so you don't miss out on one of our latest videos, hey, make sure you do like, subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be notified when we put up our latest video. And if you've got a question, put it in the comments below. We do love answering them. So, as you heard from the intro, when do you use your finger to dose coffee? Now, this has come about because it's something we used to do a lot as baristas, and there's a lot of questions coming around uh, through our channel, and we do want to answer this really clearly to you. Now, we're in a really unique time where, unfortunately, there is COVID across the whole world. So it is probably a little bit more frowned upon to be using your finger to either dose or distribute coffee in an, a commercial environment. So the short answer to my initial question is no. You don't want to use your finger in a commercial environment. Now, can you use it at home? Yeah, for sure. You're making coffee for yourself. So I'm going to cover quickly what the two techniques are of using your finger. One is actually to distribute the actual grind that once you've got your dose, and the other is to fill a whole basket up to the top to get the right dose. So let's go and check out that now, and then I'll come back and cover how you can do it commercially. So in a cafe, we do have automatic dose grinders, and that's pretty standard now. So we're really trying to put this into perspective if you're at home and you're trying to understand how you can get a more standardized extraction, because that's what it's about. Uh, it was a technique used in grinders where we would manually have to dose or put the right amount of coffee into our basket. Um, and a lot of people are still doing this at home, so that's why we wanted to address it. So if we're going to dose um, into a handle, and we've got a big mound. And that was initially what we used to be told, is grind to a huge big mound. And what you would then do is you could use your finger to simply move it around a little bit, nice and flat and level, kind of like um, doing sand when you're screeding or making concrete. And once you had a full dose, you could just literally push that back off into the hopper, the top of the grinder, and then you could reuse it so it wouldn't be wasting a lot of coffee. So that's the first technique, is to actually get us a standardized dose. So filling it all the way up and straight across. And then you're ready to tamp. Now the other way is if you actually did have the right amount of actual coffee in there. So let me go and show you what that means. So when you've got a grinder that's gonna give you the exact amount of coffee that you're after, and it's not overflowing, and you know that's the exact amount that you want, you've got to be able to distribute that, because if we tamp it now, there's obviously a mound in the top, and there's not an even bed of coffee around the outside, and we want that to be the same. So, using your uh, index finger, you can do a whole lot of crazy different, different things, but really put it into the middle, and you can do a bit of a sweep around, okay? And that's, that was a pretty interesting technique that um, you get used to doing over a lot of times, and then you can bring it back the other way. We don't want to lose any grind, but essentially you're just rotating your finger around the top to get yourself a nice even bed of coffee. Okay, so that's how you distribute um, with your finger the amount of coffee that you already need. Nice and flat and level, ready to tamp. So what happens if you've got a really low dose? And that's something that's pretty common. So if we had... All right, a far less amount of coffee, it can actually be a bit challenging because you tend to start to poke the coffee to try and get it into the gaps that you want. But as you're pressing, pressing that coffee down, you're actually not distributing it evenly. You're actually compressing that bed of coffee. So it's kind of the opposite to a channel, which would have um, uh, lesser coffee and the water would flow straight through it. You're actually creating a, a more solid mass. So the opposite to a channel, if, if that's what I had to try and explain it as. And then when you start to turn around, you tend to kind of poke it into the corners more. And it just doesn't seem to work because you tend to actually end up with a big cone right in the middle. So then you've got more coffee in the center, but then you've got a compressed coffee on the outside. So it's really not an easy way to distribute coffee with your finger if it's a super low dose. So it's a bit of a no-no. I wouldn't try and do that. You're probably best just to tap it a couple of times on the bench, get it level and tamp it and you'd have a better result than using your finger. 
So the alternatives to dosing and distributing with your finger is to get yourself a small little pot like this one and a scale and make sure you have the exact amount of coffee going into your basket, giving you the dose so you're not having to scoop it off as you would with your finger. And to distribute that coffee evenly, it is to use something like an OCD or a distributing tool. Now we've got videos uh, covering those topics, so make sure you check those out and you'll be able to work out the right amount of coffee for your coffee basket. So what is um, a quick and easy way to be able to get around um, using your finger? So the solution that we have, we've had this for a while, it is actually our own little plastic dosing tool. Now it's a piece of Perspex and it's cut in a perfect radius to allow us to get the right dose that we want in our large coffee basket. It also has a flat side. So it actually does two parts. We use the flat side to distribute the coffee the way around, and then we use the curve to scoop and take the excess out. So let me show you how this works. So we'll start with an overpacked basket as well. And you can see that we need to be able to use that coffee. So if we're keeping it as a flat edge and just moving it around, it's, it's definitely filling up all the edges of the coffee. Okay, you can then chop it forward and backwards and fill in some of the gaps. Okay, so you can see that big mound has actually ended up quite reasonably consistent through that whole coffee puck. You can turn it over and you can actually chop with the curved side as well, doesn't matter which way you go, that's going to be the same curve because it's laser cut the same. And then when you've got the excess, you can just simply scoop that off. Clean up your edges and you've got the same amount of coffee in there every time. Now you may notice, you might pick it up on the screen, but the more you chop in the particular spot, the more consistent that is going to be. So the more time you spend chopping at it and working at it, it is going to be a better coffee shop. So guys, these are about 10 bucks. Uh, they're on our store if you want them. Um, there are some commercially available kind of products out there if you want to get your hands on them. But this and a dosing pot is an amazing way to solve the finger. So for a bit of fun, as a barista, when have you thought that it was appropriate to give one of your customers the finger? Now just tell us about your experience in the comments below. Keep it clean, but hey, I'm sure it's going to be an absolute blast hearing about all the different stories that have happened out there. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Stay safe. We'll see you soon. Cheers.